Good evening and welcome to E-Bible Fellowship's Bible Study in the book of Genesis. Tonight is study number 23 of Genesis chapter 19. And we're going to begin reading in verse 15. And when the morning arose, then the angels hastened Lot, saying, Arise, take thy wife and thy two daughters which are here, lest thou be consumed in the iniquity of the city. And while he lingered, the men laid hold upon his hand, and upon the hand of his wife, and upon the hand of his two daughters, Jehovah being merciful unto him, and they brought him forth, and set him without the city. And it came to pass, when they had brought them forth abroad, that he said, Escape for thy life, look not behind thee, neither stay thou in all the plain, Escape to the mountain, lest thou be consumed. Well, we're continuing in our study of the book of Genesis, going verse by verse through the entire book, Lord willing. And uh, we, we've come to chapter 19, and we've been spending some time in the historical account of the destruction of Sodom, Gomorrah, and the cities of the plain. And we've seen how this relates to um, God's destruction of the corporate church uh, when judgment begins at the house of God. And we've also seen how um, some of the language here, such as in verse 16, after God um, commands Lot to to get out of the city, lest he be consumed in the iniquity of the city, that he lingered. And we went into uh, some detail considering why it would be that a faithful man, a righteous man, like Lot, would have tarried in the face of such an urgent command. And then we saw how in the New Testament, God in a couple of passages dealing with the, the command to flee out of the corporate church at the time of the Great Tribulation, which uh, is what this spiritually is pointing to here in Genesis 19, that we, we read in Genesis, uh, or excuse me, in Luke 17, in Luke 17, that it said in verse 31, In that day he which shall be upon the house, house top and his stuff in the house, let him not come down to take it away. And he that is in the field, let him likewise not return back. Remember Lot's wife. And uh, we saw that the word stuff, the Greek word translated as stuff, is the same word translated as vessel, in Romans 9, where God is speaking of vessels to unto honor and dishonor, that is, people. And it's a, the word um, in 1 Peter, where the Lord is speaking of the wife as the weaker vessel. And that's this word translated as stuff. And, 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 and it's right before that verse, remember Lot's wife. The context is clear. It has to do with the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. And, and uh, we speculated a little bit because God doesn't give us all the information of uh, this account. You know, it could have been many hours, quite a while, um, before, uh, or, or that Lot lingered before he came out of the city. And, and what was he doing for that time? Well, in all likelihood, he was speaking to his family. He was speaking to his, his daughters who married those sons-in-law. He was speaking to his wife, in all likelihood, um, uh, attempting to convince her, to assure her that it was the right thing to do, and, and speaking to all his family and, and his stuff. His vessel was in the city Sodom. And, and this is, um, I think, without any question, why Lot lingered. But then 
It goes on to say, the men, and again, those men are God in the appearance of two men. So this is, this is God. The men laid hold upon his hand, and upon the hand of his wife, and upon the hand of his two daughters. And we can picture that with two men. They reached out and, and they grabbed Lot's hand, and maybe another one grabbed the hand of Lot's wife, while the other man grabbed the hand of one of Lot's daughters, and, his, and in his other hand he grabbed the other daughter's hand. And, and so they, they had them all um, in, in their clutches, that is, God had them in His hand. He, he um, took hold upon their hands. In the Bible, in the Bible, the hand and the foot represent spiritually the will of a person. The, the, um, when, when God says, turn thy foot, he means turn your will or remove thy hand. It has to do with removing our will from a situation. And when God takes hold of a person's hand, it is an indicator that he has taken hold of their will. That is, God is moving them to will and to do of his good pleasure. As it says in Philippians, in Philippians, and I normally have trouble finding this verse. I think it's in Philippians 2. Yes, it is in Philippians 2, verse 13. For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. And, and another way of illustrating that or picturing that fact that God works in his people to will and to do of his good pleasure, and he can even do the same in unsaved people, is that God grabs your hand. He grabs your hand. And, and now uh, once his hand has been grabbed, and once the hand of his wife and the hand of his daughters have been grabbed, they leave the city. And notice, we don't read that these two men grabbed the hand of Lot's sons-in-law. They didn't grab the hand of the other daughters who were married to those men. No, everyone whose hand they, they got hold of did leave the city Sodom because they were doing so under the operation of the will of God for them. And everyone whose hand they did not uh, reach out and grab a hold of and, 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 and take, they didn't leave the city. No one else we, we read of left that city before its destruction. And and, and, and so that is indicating the will of God regarding those who leave the church at the end of the church age when God issues forth the command from His Word, the Bible, to come out, to depart out of the midst, and those that stay behind. What's the difference between the two? Are the ones who came out wiser, smarter, uh, more spiritually in tune. Well, in, in some ways, they are wiser and spiritually in tune if they're elect. Because we know all of God's elect did come out of the churches and congregations. But there's also a good number of people who came out of the corporate church that were not themselves saved. And, and God's hand is also in that. The Lord's hand is in that in some ways even though he didn't save them, yet God still is, is operating to some degree in the lives of unsaved individuals to um, uh, follow suit, to, to be obedient at least in this one area, uh, even though 
It's not obedience coming forth from their heart. But everyone who God did not grab a hold of, the Lord did not touch their will. He did not move within them to will or to do of his good pleasure in, in obeying his command to come out of the church. They stayed fast. They, they remained. They did not leave the churches and congregations. They, they stayed right where they were and uh, convinced, well, that, that's um, from Satan. That whole idea that the church age could ever end. It's from Satan. It's from the devil. It's not from God. We have church tradition. The church has been here for almost 2,000 years. All the reformers, um, they, they, they uh, were part of this church that we're a part of. And, and no one ever taught that you had to come out of the church age or come out of the church at the end of time. That This is some, some ridiculous thing coming forth from family radio and Mr. Camping. And, and you know, he spiritualizes. He, he reads into the Bible. He, he, he develops his own gospel program. Of course, they're completely wrong. Completely wrong about all that. It was not of Satan. It was of God. It was not um, some uh, other kind of gospel. It was the true gospel. It was not a wrong methodology to look for deeper spiritual meaning. It was the right methodology. It was biblical methodology that the Lord Jesus Christ taught when he taught in parables. It's the methodology of the Bible of the Word of God, and that can be proven again and again and again all over the Bible. And, and, and so basically it came down to they trusted their church, they trusted in the traditions of the church, in their confessions, in their creeds, they trusted these things over and above the Word of God, and many of them, many of them, never even bothered to check the scriptures to see if what they were hearing about the end of the church age and the command to flee out of the midst was true or not. It was enough for them that their pastor preached against it. He's a faithful man, isn't he? Listen how he speaks of election or listen how he preaches on hell. He, he's a faithful man and if he's against it and the whole denomination's against it, and all the other pastors out there I know who are faithful or against it, it must be the, uh, what they're saying. It has to be uh, exactly what they're saying, that, that uh, don't listen to these things. Stay right where you are. And yet, it basically it boils down to this one thing that we read here in, in Genesis 19, verse 16, the men laid hold upon his hand, and upon the hand of his wife, and upon the hand of his two daughters, Jehovah being merciful unto him. Jehovah being merciful unto Lot, his righteous servant. And, and you see, it boils down to God's mercy. God's mercy. In other words... If God were, was not merciful to Lot, what, will, what would God have done? What would the Lord have done? He would have left him in the city Sodom. He would have left him right where he was. He would have left Lot, his wife, his daughters, and his entire family, and God would have just simply came to the city and immediately destroyed it. Just, just destroyed it. Because that was his intention. That was his plan. But God, as Abraham interceded to him for the sake of the righteous in the city, God had mercy. God had mercy upon his righteous servants, the elect, uh, who a few. Uh, well, actually, all we can really prove 
that were truly saved out of Sodom was Lot. We, we know his wife wasn't truly saved, and even his two daughters we have serious questions about. But, but in their coming out, this small remnant of the whole of the city, this, this uh, small number, the, these few people, they are typifying God's elect as God had mercy upon his elect people. Here we are, here we are, living on the earth in the day of judgment after God has already finished matters with uh, the corporate church. He's already carried out the 23-year judgment and brought it to a conclusion. He has now bundled up all those in the churches as tares for the burning. All of the elect came out prior to May 21, 2011. Not everyone that came out of the church was elect, but all the elect in the church did come out. And, and now we find ourselves still outside the church, remaining uh, it, alive and remaining in the world as God now carries out this prolonged judgment on all the unsaved inhabitants of the earth. And, uh, you know, we're hearing reports. We're hearing news. We're, we're hearing about this one who came out. This one who came out, maybe the same time we did, or, or we met these people at fellowships. We met them on track trips. We met them um, just, just at a conference, at, at a Bible conference. We, we know they were, they were completely on board. They had as much understanding as we did. They, they used to talk about uh, how wonderful it was that they came out of the church, what a blessing it was. And now we're hearing reports of some of these same people going back to church. Going back to church. And it, it's um, less and less. We're, we're hearing about that less and less because, um, well, already many have returned. And, and, and so more and more as time goes on, it, it, it's an even greater fine-tuning or refining of the elect people of God as the dross is being purged away from the silver and, and, and the gold is being purified. It, it, it's more and more elect that are, that are enduring to the end. And, uh, and, and many that, that uh, clung by flatteries are, are falling off and, and they're going back to the world or to the church and, and now it's less and less. But still occasionally we'll hear of someone who has gone back and, and you see you see God in what he, the Lord is saying here has not changed. Jehovah being merciful to them. Jehovah being merciful unto him and they brought him forth and set him without the city. God's act of mercy was bringing his people out of the city, Sodom, which we've already seen, is pointing to the corporate church. And, and it was merciful of God to, to do this thing on our behalf, to show us such mercy, to deliver us from a city that was marked for destruction, a city in which everyone within would be killed. Historically, it was true of the, the people of Sodom, and spiritually it's true of all in the corporate church. And yet now, again, people are going back. Now, what does that mean? What does it mean? If God was merciful in bringing people out and, and setting them without the city, and then some of these same, because of the passage of time and because they lack spiritual eyes to see or understand that uh, the, the nature of Judgment Day, and because they failed to understand the spiritual judgment on the world, well, the little truth 
they began with in understanding the spiritual judgment on the church is also taken from them. And so now they don't see any spiritual judgment anywhere. They're, they're being blinded and they return to the church. Y you see that act of mercy is being despised. That act of God's mercy that um, they, they could say that was also applied to them because they came out. It, it, is, it is being, um, uh, it, it, well, I guess despised is, is the word. It, it is the, the word that describes it best. It is, it, it is being disdained in their sight and they have gone back to the church, which basically is indicating they no longer are enjoying or experiencing the mercy of God. They have, they have left the area in which God showed them mercy without the city, and, and they've returned to the area of the, the falling fire and brimstone of, that was under the wrath of God. And, and, and you see, they, they did not endure to the end, which would have shown they were saved and truly did receive the mercy of God, but because God never pardoned them, God never made payment for their sins at the foundation of the world, they, they were like those who say they believe, who profess to be a Christian, but then it's proven uh, in, in the way they conduct themselves and their understanding of, or lack of understanding of the Word of God, the Bible, in the way they, they trample all over the commandments, the truths, the, the, the faithful doctrines of the Scripture, that those who profess they were saved and therefore profess they received mercy never indeed were. Likewise, their failure to, um, to wait on the Lord, to endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ, to endure sound doctrine as we, we uh, are, again, are, are waiting for God to carry out this prolonged judgment period, is evidence that God actually never had mercy upon them. They, they are returning uh, to uh, the place that is under the judgment of God because in actuality, they themselves are under the judgment of God. And, and you know, we're living in a time when, when no one can fake it. No one can, um, can do what happened throughout the church age when wheat and tares grew together and you could not pull up the tares or else you might pull up the wheat. And so God determined to let them grow together. Well, that time is over with. God will make certain that it is only his people that are left standing before his judgment seat. It is only his people that endure these trials and tribulations and grievous afflictions in, in the spiritual realm until the end. They endure to the end, thus proving they were saved. Well, uh, Lord willing, when we get together in our next Bible study, we're going to, we're going to come back and, into this same passage and, and pick up these, these things. It's, it's very important information. It's enlightening information that really explains a lot of uh, God's grace towards us that he bestowed upon us in, in simply bringing us out of a church that was under the wrath of God.